Hi, I'm Laura Merling, Chief Transformation and Operations Officer at Arvest Bank. This week is my first year anniversary at Arvest. It might be interesting to share with you why I left a Silicon Valley company to join a community bank in Bentonville, Arkansas. Well, the answer is the financial services industry is in the middle of a disruption, and I like the opportunity that disruption brings. It's an important opportunity, and for us, it's an opportunity to rethink what it means to be a community bank in a digital world. I find it exciting, and I hope you do too. So who is Arvest Bank? Arvest Bank is a leading community-based financial institution with more than $26 billion in assets. We are also serving more than 110 communities across Arkansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Kansas. It's a high priority for us to continually invest in providing the digital tools and services that our customers expect, both our retail customers and our growing commercial customer base. So where are we on this transformation journey one year in? Well, we know that transformation impacts every aspect of our business. We're reimagining what it means to be a community bank in a digital world. And so in order to do that, we spent the last year identifying our path forward to align our business strategy with our technology strategy. The technology stack is critical in order to allow us to be flexible and meeting our customers' needs. It all starts for us on the path with cloud computing, as well as a new data platform, and we've decided to take on building a new banking core as the foundation. So where are we headed from here? Our journey to defining what it means to be a community bank in a digital world means we're taking a look at each aspect of the bank, and we're looking to create a consistent experience across all channels. We need to be hyper-focused on the customer and what they need, that means we actually have to think about data at the center of everything that we do, whether it's front office or back office, and especially when it comes to facing the customer. So let me tell you a little bit about a customer story and data. One of the things that we learned was we had done some research and understood that our customers preferred or told us they preferred more ATMs and longer branch hours. Well, that tells you one story, but then when you look at that same data from a different perspective, those exact same customers actually told us that they preferred a digital channel. Over 95% of them preferred digitally. And so you have to kind of take a step back and say, well, what does that really mean? Uh, and if we hadn't looked at the data from both angles and thought about it, we wouldn't get that answer right. It's at the center of everything we do is data, for, at least from this point forward. So that was the foundation. Now we have other foundational pillars that support our things like our back office and our contact center. We have to provide a level of simplification and automation, removing manual processes and creating operational efficiencies. So around that, we had to think about what does it mean? How do we, how do we get these efficiencies, create new customer experiences? And so at the center of our transformation is a shift as a business to having a data mindset. We needed to actually redefine our customer interaction models and our back office operations. And so at the heart of it, we decided to build a data platform based on GCP. So this data platform, we also wanted to give it a vision, a vision that aligned with our business vision. So the data platform is to be a living architecture that will be built as a foundation to support our best future. It will be using real-time data for experiences and decisions. And it's really important to keep that as part of your mindset and create a vision for where you're taking your data platform to know what you need to create and how you think about that future state. So in defining the data platform, we also said, well, how are we going to do this? We can't just lift and shift all the data. So we identified six use cases. And each one of these use cases had a set of criteria. The first criteria was it had to be solving an immediate pain point for the business and it had to be able to be solved within 90 days. Each one of the criteria or each one of the business cases, I should say, or use cases needed to actually test an end-to-end -end, you know, aspect of the data platform. So whether it was access to real-time data for AI decisioning, or whether it was to do reporting, or even creating new digital experiences for customers. And of course, we all wanted to be able to ingest third-party data. And so what does that look like? Well, we did all of this and we've been doing all this while standing up our GCP foundations over the last year. Um, we had a desire to move fast and we have been moving fast, but of course there's lots of lessons to learn. 
We identified data sources, we set up the infrastructure, and we enabled access and permissions. Then we ingested the data, and we did a bunch of transformations, and we did those once it was all in GCP, and then you think we'd be ready to go. So we partnered with the Google PSO team, the Google Professional Services Organization, uh, to jointly pursue an automation of underwriting. So think about this. How do you decide who you give a loan? And so think this as small business customers and what we call our Arvest Opportunity Fund. The Arvest Opportunity Fund is where we extend uh, loans to small business customers that might not normally be eligible. And so being able to automate that process is really key to our business. Now, we've got all those steps done and we're on our path forward, but we did take a lot of lessons learned along that way. The pre three primary lessons that we think we've gotten out of this transformation so far around our data platform are around, um, we'll start with and say the first one is really around who needs to know what, who needs to learn the data platform and what do they need to learn? Uh, first and foremost, we didn't have enough people trained uh, on the platform and we needed to make sure that, so it was about who did we anticipate needed to be trained versus who need to be trained? And then did we have learning journeys identified for them? What do they need to learn and over what period of time? And then of course, making the time available for them to learn while they're trying to build the data platform. It's all kind of tricky, but really important to do. Second, um, we learned that we had not established a framework that met the needs of our internal teams nor our partners as they looked to get access to the different data sources. We ultimately needed to create a set of persona templates for the access. Now, it seems like you would have thought of that up front, and we thought we had, but once we started getting people access to the data and started thinking about the use cases, um, we learned what the real needs were and the access requirements. Lastly, we realized that while we had set up some of the foundational aspects of GCP and we had set up the data platform, um, we had not actually set up the environment to begin using the pre-built AI, AI models that come with Google. So think the Vertex platform. Were we really ready to consume it? We weren't. So those were kind of our three major lessons. Um, they're all good learnings, uh, lots of progress since then, and we're off and running. Back to moving fast. Look forward to seeing you on the other side. 